before we get into this video, I want to say I know my voice sounds super weird because I'm sick. I wasn't sick when I began writing this video, and less than three days later, here I am. I really hope this doesn't ruin the viewing experience for you, but if it does, that's okay. Simple, honest, direct language. Two syllables. Shell shock. Almost sounds like the guns themselves. That was 70 years ago. Then a whole generation went by, and the Second World War came along, and we, the very same combat condition was called battle fatigue. Four syllables now. Takes a little longer to say. Picture this. You're in the middle of a conversation with a friend. He says something he thinks is absolutely hilarious. Peak comedy from your pal AJ. But you didn't find it funny. And if you're me, you'd call him out on the fact that what he said wasn't funny, you'd make a 10 minute video about it. But most people would just shrug because we're all under the guise that comedy is subjective. Sure, there are just so many kinds of comedy just out and about in the world, some of which you won't find funny, and that is okay. But is comedy subjective? The primary, most accepted theory behind what makes something humorous is known as the incongruity theory. This theory implies that something is funny when one realizes a difference between what is expected and what actually happens. Therefore, if someone makes a joke that falls under that criteria, which is pretty much, you know, every joke in existence, that joke is funny. Arthur Schopenhauer offers a more specific version of the incongruity theory, arguing that humor arising from a failure of a concept to account for an object of thought. When the particular outstrips the general, we are faced with an incongruity. Schopenhauer also emphasizes the element of surprise, saying that the greater and more unexpected this congru incongruity is, the more violent will be his laughter. Take George Carlin, for example, who, even if you're not familiar with his name, you've definitely seen at least this bit of his work somewhere. Rat shit, bat shit, dirty old twice. 69 assholes tied in a knot. Hooray! Lizard shit! Fuck! <laughs> he is regarded by most as funny, and to me, he is a comedic fucking genius. But Amy Schumer, who, you know, she might make your willy retract into your body, but she's making money, and technically her jokes fall under the incongruity theory, so technically she is funny. So, again, going by widely accepted theories that have been in place for god knows how long, the incongruity is less inspected and isn't as great in your eyes, then your laughter will be not as violent. Or in your case with your hypothetical friend, no laughter will ensue at all. But that doesn't make his joke funny or unfunny, it makes his joke, well, a joke. A good one? Depends on the person, because comedy technically isn't subjective, because in order for it to be comedy, it has to fit a pretty strict criteria, in my opinion, which, at least in my eyes, makes incongruity the definition of comedy, therefore making it not subjective. But, you know, that's in my eyes, and all of our thoughts are, well, subjective. Hey, bitch, here I go. Shell's MT, and his body's on the floor. Call it MT, cause I'm about to kill me more. Hey, we ain't friend, 